I saw my first killer whale last year, and it was really, really exciting. Each time you see that dorsal fin come out of the water, or you see a whale breach you know, in the distance, it's a very cool experience every single time. My name is Jessica Lundin. I'm a graduate student at the University of Washington in the Department of Biology, and I study whale poop. We study scat samples, they're called, from the killer whales. And the, the scat samples are an incredible resource. The beauty of the scat, and compared to something like a biopsy sample, is it's completely non-invasive. We can be you know, 500 feet or more, 1,000 feet from the whale, and we can get a sample that tells us what's going on inside that whale's body at that point in time. I'm going to head down to Lime Kiln and kind of poke around there and see if something shows up. The way we start to hear of reports of whales is from our own scouting on the west side and from friends that are on the west side doing lookouts for us. And once we get that report of whales, then we know it's time to gather the team and head to the boat. find our scat samples is using our conservation canine. It's a scat detection dog named Tucker. Tucker's a black lab cross. He was rescued from a shelter four years ago and he was found to have very strong ball drive. Tucker has been trained to know that when he finds killer whale scat, it means he gets to play with his ball. And that's incentive for him to be on the go. bow of our boat go, every day buddy. smelling for the scat. I'm going to pour this in and then have it back. Oh, actually, Jones, I've got a nice floater back here. The Southern Resident Killer Whale Recovery Plan, which was established in 2005 when they went on the endangered species list, they came up with three proposed threats to why the killer whales are likely struggling. And the first of those is too many boats, the second is too little prey, and the third is exposure to different contaminants within, within the water. But what we can do with the SCAT is we can look at all three at the same time, which is something no study has been able to do yet. And not only that, is we can see how they are interrelated, how one may be affecting the other. No one threat's going to happen in isolation. No one thing's going to be the, the sole cause of anything. But what we can do is we can tease out which of these three proposed threats is maybe more influential? You know, how can we maybe focus our remediation efforts, remediation money, to look at what is it really gonna take to make the most impact to helping keep these whales around? So we can take an animal like the killer whales that, that people can, can see and say, wow, those are really cool animals. We, we need to keep those animals around. And if we can show that they're contaminated because of choices we are making, that seems like such a, a powerful way to influence a decision, to influence policy, to, to clean up the environment.